Denver here. Uh, welcome to the world premiere of Texas. I'm Fred Greenhall here with uh, Vader, playwright, Pat Radcliffe. Hey. Hey, how are you? That was, I've been to so many online events and that was the best, like coolest countdown ever. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we are going to have a wonderful evening tonight. I'm so excited that we get to finally share this. I think it's closing on two, maybe more than two years of uh, activity before we to get us to this point. And now we're here. Uh, many things of how this would get launched, we thought might be different. But then there was this little thing called a pandemic, which uh, <laughs> shook things up. And then when we thought like, oh, maybe we'll still be able to like do a, a smaller thing in person, that's kind of got shook up as well but the show will go on um so excited to share it um asada do you is there anything about the show you'd like to sort of set up for people as we before we get into it or um yeah what which we which we tell people well i mean i can say that um we you know kind of came together on this project as you said like two plus years ago um, and I was working on the world building for the novel. I never thought of it that I would be doing like a radio play. Um, and basically this is a story, um, a future story um, about how people, uh, human beings have become, um, gone to this pretty dark existential place, nihilistic almost and making a decision to create this nonviolent means of protest. Um, and this nonviolent means of protest is to get together in their own commune and decide to not have children, um, to not perpetuate the barbarism and violence of the world. Um, that's pretty much the premise. It's a dark premise. Um, and it's really interesting how um, pre-pandemic and the writing of this and, and just how uh, true to life, some of the things that we'll hear tonight, you know, mm -hmm. is kind of gonna come to life in the story. Um, but yeah, this was, this was kind of an experiment for me, uh, becoming acquainted with the characters of this world because I was doing a lot of the world building when you and I came together. Um, so yeah, I don't wanna give away too much, uh, but yeah, so it's, um, a combination of um, radio drama, novel, all into one world. Yeah, well, and I think you'll everyone will experience it. They'll feel sort of how richly layered it all is, and sort of how fully envisioned this this world is. Um, yeah, in the end, ultimately, there was like over a dozen performers who joined us from all across the world, and we have uh, maybe half dozen of them joining us later. So we'll get to hear both a little bit about kind of the creation on the just sort of the writing and the production side, as well as uh, what it's like to act and, and to work remotely. Um, but yeah, let's just play this show. Uh, we will say it is for mature audiences um, and has mature you know, uh, subject matter, swearing, that sort of thing. But uh, that's pretty much it. Put on good headphones if you got them. And uh, we also do want to say this was a, a grant from the Maine Arts Commission was very helpful in making this project happen. So we want to give thanks to them. And let's play The Collective. See you on the other side. Dagaz Media presents The Collective, an original radio play by Asada Radcliffe. Produced by Fred Greenhalgh. Albuquerque, New Mexico, six years after the catastrophic event. This is Nora. I'm not sure if you're getting my transmissions. I'm in trouble. I can't tell you why, not now. I've been traveling with a small group of the collective, about 15 of us. I'm sitting at the back of the scout's bus. We've been on the road now for two months trying to get to the region. Apparently, it's a collective location, not on the radar, somewhere in New Mexico. We're right outside the old city of Albuquerque. I'm having pains and I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it. I'll send another transmit as soon as I can. Members of the collective, 
recording on right. interruption yeah. on your music. So frequency. sick of them hacking into our broadcast. Short message from again. Plutarchs comes to no. you as a benevolent sharing of the most wonderful opportunity. We, the Plutarchs, value the human species, and though we are looked at as opposers of the collective, we do support the freedom of personal choice as it relates to human reproduction. In light of the most recent tragic planetary event that almost destroyed human life itself, the Plutarchs have managed to help sustain basic resources here on Earth and continue our endeavors in a most extraordinary feat of settling people off-planet. Good! Get the fuck off our land! Quiet, Nino! We need to hear what they're up to next! Driver Scout, can you please turn that shit off? The name's Jeffrey, and you all insisted for me to link up this broadcast, which will cost you extra, by the way. Extra. So I'm keeping it on and turning it up. Members of the Collective, we ask you to reconsider the gift of giving human life and give up your vow of abstaining from human reproduction. There is no need for what you consider to be a form of non-violent protest. We plead with you to join us in our efforts to embrace the continuity of the species. If you join us, we will drop all charges of treason and terrorism. We will provide free transport and accommodations both on or off-world, your choice and any male member of your group will have access to free V-reversals, enabling you to once again replenish the human race as we now embark on colonizing the solar system. Oh my god, V-reversal? Ouch! I trust Young to never betray us like that. <laughs> You're quite right. Even if I wanted to do that, reversing a vasectomy doesn't sound pleasurable. Oh my god! Oh, oh no! Oh! What? Oh my god, my back! Jeffrey, what happened? I don't know yet. Are we gonna make it to the region? That does it sound. Oh, what's happening? It's dead. Oh no electricity. That's There's been a charging terrible. station for miles. Oh, We're no. just under a mile outside of Albuquerque. Yeah, no. What does that mean? That means we're walking. What? I'm not walking anywhere in this heat. I'm 70 years old. Yeah. I'm the scout. My call. We'll walk slow. Or stay here if you like. The rest of you, let's go. Okay, everyone, I know holding up at an old comic book store wasn't in the plan, but he here we are. There aren't any electric charging stations for miles, so getting back on the bus is out of the question. Just hold tight, flip through a comic while we contact the region to see if we can get a transport. <gasps> are, are, are you okay? What's your name? Nora. Hold on, Nora. Just here. Just sit on the floor. I'll get the medic. Was she with us? Where's Nina? Nina. Who is she? Hey, Jeffrey. What's up? This lady isn't doing well. Can you take a look at her? Who is that? Hi, I'm Nina. What's your name? <sighs> oh, tell me where it hurts. Hey, Jeffrey. Can you clear everyone out while I examine her? Okay, can you all move to the back of the store while we treat this lady? What the hell are we supposed to do? You're our scout. You're supposed to get us to the region safely. Yeah, what's the plan? There's 14 of us. Where are we going to get food and water? I'm the scout. Not my job to feed you. Just to get you to the region. Oh, great. As members of the collective that paid you well, it's your job to keep us safe. As a non-member of the collective, I could tell you to fuck off. What is happening right now? Just stop it? Hey guys, there's a bathroom in the back attached to a water tank. There is water, but I don't know how much. You can start there and fill your bottles. Thank you, Young. Can you lead everyone to the back of the store while I... <gasps> can you all get the hell out of here so I can examine her? Okay, yeah. Is she Yes, she needs Okay, Nora, I'm just gonna lift up your cape here. Please, don't touch me. I'll be fine. I'm just cramping from a long walk. I'm the medical professional here. Let me be the judge. I'm just gonna apply a little pressure on your stomach. Whoa. Please don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone what? Guys? What is it? What the? Oh my god. You've got to be kidding me. She's a... a carrier? Shh. What the hell? Shh. We don't want to broadcast it. God, why did I take this fucking job again? I can't believe this is happening. Nina, did, did you know about this? <laughs> Really young? No. I didn't know about this. How would I know about this? 
<gasps> Is she gonna have it right now? I'm a medic. I've never delivered a carrier. How are you doing, Nora? I don't know. You're so screwed. Shit. Nora, you're a collective member. You just broke the rule of the very reason for our existence. No kids, remember? And what the hell were you thinking coming on the transport pregnant? Sorry. Like, who the hell gets pregnant in the collective? Like, how stupid could you be? Shit, here comes someone. Cover her stomach. Hey, what's going on? We have a sick woman here, as you can see. Can't you just see a doctor once we arrive? Everyone's getting nervous. We need to leave. We leave when we say it's time. Why don't you just go back to the others while we take care of this lady? Is she gonna die? No one's gonna die here, okay? Jeffrey, can you get me some water for Nora, please? And take everyone with you. Nora, just lie down. Use my jacket for a pillow. I want to talk to Young right over here, okay? Don't have the baby yet. Yeah, whatever. We could just leave your ass here. Nina, please, just walk away. Ugh. What are we gonna do, Young? It's obvious that she can't walk right now. It's too dangerous to stay here an entire day. There's a lot of camps in town with travelers. Travelers will attack and steal. Camps? That makes no sense. There's very little water around here. Here's the water for your patient. Yeah. Young, can you go outside, see if we can get a signal to the region, let them know we're stranded in town, and watch your back? I'm on it. What I don't understand is how she managed to be that pregnant without anyone noticing. I thought your organization was committed to not having children for the sake of saving mankind from future wars, barbarism, blah blah blah. Jeffrey, I can't with you right now. Nora, how are you doing? Here's some water. And how's the pain? It's actually going away. Good. Who are you? I told you, my name is Nora. Nora what? Harlem. Harlem? You traveled all this way from New York? Oh my god, you're a day zero survivor! Hey, guys, uh, I was able to send a signal and connect to the region. What'd they say? They're not coming to get us, but they said they'll meet us at the gate. Oh my god. Oh shit. The region is an undisclosed collective location. If they leave to come get us, they will get tracked. Which defeats the point of having a secret location. Okay, Nora. When do you think you'll have... it? I don't know. I've never had one before. Look, we're trying to fucking help you. What would help me is if you'd stop talking. Wow, really? My vote is to leave your ass here, because you being here is selfish. You jeopardize all of our lives. Nina, please. This isn't helping. We're leaving. Are you kidding me? There's an empathy builder site about four miles from here. They have a clinic and they protect carriers. We need to try and figure out how we can get there safely. Hi, Nora. My name's Young. And despite what the scout just said, we're not leaving you here. She's right, your friend. It was selfish of me to come on the transport. I'm only maybe six months along. I thought I could make it, but I can go to the Empathy Builder site. Good, because I saw a bicycle out back. Wait, what? It, it's four miles out of the way. It's the only choice we have. Y you can't expect her to go out alone. If she runs into a traveler and they see her condition, you know they'll turn her in. Nora, I can draw a map for you. I can talk you through it. I can't believe you're talking about leaving one of us behind. It's fine. I'll do it. Nora, you can't. Oh my god, Young and his bleeding heart. You don't have a choice. I won't jeopardize anyone. Then I'll go with you. No, you won't. Once she gets there, the empathy builders will take care of her. This is bullshit. She's made up her mind. I'll take a look at the bike and make sure it's rideable. Jeff, you're not in charge. You're just a scout. Exactly. I'm the one who is paid to save your asses and get you to the region alive. You want to go with her and take your chances and get turned over to the Plutarchs? Be my guest. Young, I appreciate you sticking up for me, but I'm going alone. I'm feeling better, and I don't want to talk about it. I'm calling everyone in. Make sure she's covered. Listen, everyone, we've unfortunately got a lot of coverage here, which means that there's a lot more foot traffic in town than I feel comfortable with. There's 15 of us all together, and I don't know how many out there are a threat. 
It's too dangerous for us to stay here. What are you suggesting? We're leaving. Now. Leaving during the day? Can't we can get now. ambushed. Nina, I've scouted Albuquerque territory a thousand times, and I've never been ambushed. Hey. What about the live feeds? There could be cameras everywhere. The cameras are dead. The Plutarchs don't spend money on live feeds in areas where there's hardly any water. I know you're all scared. Out there, we can run. And I know where to run. In here, we get ambushed, we die. Is there any part of that sentence that any of you are struggling with? Good. We leave now. Nora, how are you? I'm okay. You don't have to leave right now. Since we're pulling out early, any travelers out there keeping an eye on us will think we've all left. You can sit tight until nightfall. <laughs> I guess we're doing this. We're leaving her behind. I looked over the map. The bike ride to the Empathy Builder site is less than an hour away. If I leave at sundown, I'll be fine. I'm not afraid. I put the bike behind the counter. As everyone is leaving, duck behind there and hide so no one will notice you've stayed behind. Okay. By the time anyone in the group might notice, we'll be long gone. We'll just say you went your own way. I only have one question. When I get to the Empathy Builder site, do you know what will happen to me? I really don't know what they do with carriers. You're the first carrier I've ever met. Maybe they'll turn you over to the Plutarchs. Thanks, Jeffrey. That's helpful. Sorry. Best case scenario, they will allow you to stay with them and take care of you. Um, that is what they're supposed to do. I'm leaving an extra pack for you. There's water and enough food to get you by for a few days if you need it. Hopefully, you won't need it. Good luck, kiddo. Are you sure you don't want me to come with you? I can take care of myself, Young. This is wrong on so many levels. I can't and I won't jeopardize anyone else. Do me a favor. Take this. This is my radio. I always have two. If you get into any trouble, dial in. Thanks. Young, let's go. Okay. Goodbye, Nora. Remember, dial in if you need help. Yeah. Good luck, Harlem. You can't blame Jeffrey for doing his job. He's just trying to get us all to safety. <sighs> Not all of us, obviously. Yeah. Point taken. She'll be fine. Let's move. I didn't make it this far to die here. I don't know if you're getting my transmissions. I'm still on audio, riding a bike, in the desert, at night. Six months pregnant. Is it my first option to get to an Empathy Builder site? I'm on the outskirts of Albuquerque, the border road that traces the edges of the desert. Lots of travelers. It's getting real windy out here and cigarette smoke's in the air. Cigarettes were banned from the planet over 10 years ago and they cost a fortune. Like who can afford a freaking cigarette? I could be a small fortune for someone out here real desperate if I'm not careful. My grandmother always told me I wasn't that bright. A sentiment she shared about my mother as well. My grandmother, the saint, who smoked. Every time I smell cigarette smoke, I remember our last morning together. It was just before day zero. Nora! I'm up, Grandma. On a live beat with my friend Carrie. Come eat your breakfast. You'll be late for school. Be right there. Nora, you have to get out of New York. Day zero has been happening in cities all over the world. The news blackout of the city running out of water is intentional. Come to New Mexico. It's safe here. Carrie, there's no way my grandmother's leaving Harlem. She's been here all her life. And anyways, you know how she feels about the collective. She doesn't have to join or take the oath. She's an elder. The oath is about not having kids, which obviously excludes her. And your mom helped start the collective. There's nothing biblical about the collective. Mom died without my grandma even speaking to her because my mother was an atheist. My grandmother would stroke out if she knew I joined the collective. Nora, this is about saving your life. New York is going to run out of water any day now. There won't be a heads up. Start planning. 
There's a place for both of you here with us. I'll check back in with you next week. In the meantime, hang in there. You're my best friend, and I'll do whatever you need me to do to get you here. The Collective will always be here for you. Thanks, Carrie. I uh, gotta go. And remember, the world ends with us. The world ends with us. With less than a few thousand people on the planet, I'm surprised to see a few squatters stowed away in the empty remnants of old apartments. I'm riding past the flickering of a fire, an old woman wrapped in a blanket huddled close to a fire. My cape covers me as my capture could be a small fortune. Lots of people out here in the night, voices speaking Spanish. I realize the reason the empathy builders have a site here. This territory of New Mexico has become a safe zone for people with brown skin. The Plutarchs had given up on hunting down the endangered races, people like me who were black and brown, simply because they view us as expendable and ultimately dying. Areas like this supposedly lacked water and fertile ground. It was easy to spot the empathy builder site. It was the only place where that had electricity, meaning that faint light I saw came into view sooner than I had expected. An armed guard stood in front of a one-story building, an old-style adobe structure, made to withstand the sun we humans could no longer tolerate. Instead of skin cancer, people in the mid-21st century died of vitamin D deficiency. Name? Nora Harlem. I haven't met any Harlem folks. How the hell did you get way out here? As you can see, I had no choice. Oh, oh, you're, you're a carrier. Uh, so sorry, Miss Harlem. Please, uh, come on in. Do you have a bathroom? Uh, yeah, sure. Right over here. Okay, let's see if you work. Hey, Young? Young, are you there? Okay, I'll leave a message. I hope you all made it to the region. I just made it to the Empathy Builder site. No one seems to be here but a guard. So far, so good. I'll check in when I can. Hey, uh, you okay in there? Yeah, I'll be right out. <laughs> okay, just checking, because if I need to contact someone, you're the first carrier I've ever seen here. I want to make sure you're okay. I'm fine, thank you. Just hungry and tired. Sorry we don't have much here, but we do have food and water. Uh, no one's here but me because it's night. Uh, I can show you to a room with a bed. I'll have to make a couple of calls. Uh, well, I mean, I can't do that tonight. But in the morning, you can speak to the director. I'm sorry I can't do more. There's uh, food and water across the hall. Thank you. Um, I need to connect. We have a port. It works. Are you a collective member? Why do you ask? Uh, the insignia next to your ear. That's a collective symbol, right? Uh, no problem at all if you are. If you use the port, though, they listen in, you know. The powers that be. I'm not sending a live transmit. I have a VRF. A uh, VRF? I thought those were cancelled. Used for that old collective religion. Something about a way to transmit and talk to the dead and all. Isn't that a collective thing? Can you just show me the port? Please. Yeah, sure. It's in the kitchen. Oh, here you go. There's some food in the cooler. When you're finished, one of the night staff will set you up in a room. I'm Jacob. If you need anything, let me know. Okay. Okay, let's see. This is an old port connection. See if this works? Sarah Harlem? There you are, dear. Are you okay, sweetie? I'm... okay. Hi, Mom. No. I know you're not okay. You hesitated. I'm on my way to join the others. Good. I'm glad you're on your way. You still didn't answer my question. I'm worried. They're kidnapping women. They're taking the poorest women, women who have either openly joined the collective and 
Pregnant women. Yes, honey. I know. It's getting worse. I mean, we are here for whatever reason as human beings, right? It's not like we designed our bodies. Reproduction is natural. Reproduction is a choice. Our species was also not meant for perpetual barbarism. Thousands of years of slaughter. It must end, dear. We are the guardians of the earth. We must protect her. Look, I know you're worried. We will be together again, but this is the only way. You're a Harlem. You can do this. Promise me you'll tell me about Harlem the next time we talk? I miss it. Harlem was home. Whether you know it or not, you carry the memories in you from me. Time to go, baby. Next time. Okay. I don't know when I can connect again. Don't worry. I'll always be here. And remember, the world ends with us. The world ends with us. Uh, miss? Good morning. You okay in there? Yeah, I'm fine. Good morning, Jacob. Just wanted to let you know that the director is ready to see you. Sure. Follow me. Wow, I can't believe you're a carrier. Uh, last time I saw a carrier was back in the V age. Back then, the Blue Dogs paid a lot of coin for your kind. What do you mean, my kind? Uh, sorry, miss. I don't mean any disrespect. So, you haven't seen any carriers come through here? Nope. I've been here four years now. You seen any Plutarchs? No, they don't come around here in the dry desert. Last I heard, the capital is on some fancy island off the coast of Arkansas. The Plutarchs always stay close to water. At least, that's what I heard. Here you go. In here. Okay, I don't see anyone. Where's the director? Just listen in. This is a live feed? Yep, and we only have audio. All of these screens are nothing but show. Lost visual a couple of years ago. Personally, between you and me, I don't even think the director is on planet. Oh, and don't say I said that. <laughs> this is guard EBS-3. Sending transmission for the director. Do you copy? Transmission started. Okay, Miss Harlem. If you need anything, let me know. Hello, Miss Harlem. I am the director. I hope you slept well. Yes, um, thank you. Good. Look at you. Poor thing. Please, sit down. You can see me. Yes. I do apologize that our facilities aren't quite as modern as our sister sites, though we do have all of the basics. A medical room, equipped for most emergencies. We have water, food, an actual bathroom, and a live port that I see you've had the chance to utilize, using a VRF. How do you know that? I get alerts every time the port is used for communication, tracking purposes. Security is very important. Please, sit down. In your condition, the Empathy Builders are the best refuge. How may we be of service? What is this place exactly? The Empathy Builders sites are spread sparingly throughout the planet at undisclosed locations. If you are in need of sanctuary, as you are, you learn only of the location you need to get to. Which means I can't tell you exactly how many locations there are. Who do you work for? The Empathy Builders are like embassies that have maintained neutrality in the midst of the collective resistance. We've been around since before you were born. Do the Plutarchs know you're here? You look worried. There's no need to feel apprehensive. We are here to protect you. You didn't answer my question. The Empathy Builders don't openly oppose the Plutarchs, nor openly support the Collective. We do, however, shelter any carriers with discretion, of course. Who else knows of your condition? 
What does that mean? If you want us to help you, I need to know who else knows. If certain authorities know you're a carrier, you could already be tracked. How did you get here? From New York, right? I traveled on my own. I was trying to make it to see a friend. The father of the child? No. He's dead. Are you going to turn me in? Turn you into who, dear? You said it yourself. The empathy builders practice neutrality. You say you don't work for the collective or the Plutarchs. Someone is funding you. Miss Harlem, the Plutarchs are not the enemy. Their only concern is for everyone to embrace the continuity of the human species. Yes, and they express their concern by making it illegal for people who choose not to have children. And yet, here you are. A member of the collective who violated the very creed of your resistance. Which means you are no longer a member. You don't know that. Do you actually think that the Collective will risk everything they have fought and protected just to hide you? And even more importantly, are you even thinking about how much danger you put them in? I see that you haven't considered any of these things. You're the first carrier that has come through here in quite some time. The difference with you is that you come with baggage, and not just the unborn. I don't think I'll be staying here. You came here on your own accord, Miss Harlem. You can't make me stay here. You're off planet. You could be too. Imagine that for you and your unborn. Guaranteed safety off world. If you leave, we cannot guarantee your safety. What just happened? Hello? Are you still there? You can't keep me here. Hey. Is everything okay? You got to meet the director? Yes, I did. Are there other women here besides me? A, a couple more came in today. Are you okay? I'm not staying. Uh, okay. I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, where are you going? I'm getting my things. Do you mind if I take some food? No, sure. I can sneak some for you. Where do people get water? There are tanks that come through here. Water pirates. They steal water up north near Taos. The Plutarchs have pretty much bob-wired all of the natural water sources up in the mountains and the lakes, so the pirates don't always make it out alive. Anyone sees you like this, you'd get kidnapped in a minute. I can take care of myself. I'm under orders. So, what happens if I walk out? Um, well... Right, look, I don't know you, and I don't even know if I should be saying this, but I don't feel right staying here, and I don't trust the director. I don't know about this. Okay. I have some friends nearby. I'll give you a map. Please. I have to get somewhere safe. Where's my bike? Young! Are you there? Young! Nora! Oh my god, are you okay? I'm somewhere in the city. Did you guys make it to the region? No. Why aren't you at the Empathy Builder site? I didn't feel safe there. I met someone who gave me a map. Friends of his I could stay with. No! No, you have to get to safety. There's a sandstorm coming. What's that? Nora, you have to find shelter. Let me check your coordinates. What? Uh, you're not too far from an aqueduct. About a mile or so, north. We passed it on the way in. Where do I go? Just keep going north. You'll come to an overpass. Go down inside the aqueduct when you see it. You've got to get out of this storm. Okay. North. Okay. Just, just keep going in the direction you're going. I can track you from my radio. Hello? Hello? Hello, Young? Nora? Yeah, I'm here. How's your baby? I think, okay. I, I haven't had any more pain. As soon as we get back to the refuge, we'll come find you. Just keep your radio on until... Young? Young? Shit! Ugh. Ugh. Keep your heads down! Hold on to the person's clothing in front of you! I can't see! <laughs> what is this? What's going on? It's a fucking sandstorm! <laughs> Stop talking and stay close! <laughs> We're not gonna make it! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
my Ariane? god, my hair is going everywhere. Oh, Where's Scott? Ariane. Who's Scott? So I am Sam. Scott! 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 We need to stop! Wait, lady! Come back! Oh, where the hell's that way going? I have to Scott! Oh, where are you no, going? You have to stay here! <laughs> I have to find my husband. Oh, we have to stay close. Come on, everyone. We're all stay close. gonna die. I knew it. Shut up. We're not gonna stay close. Die. Hey, freeze. Jeffrey, let her go. Please, everyone, don't run. We have to stay together. What do you believe happened? 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 The sand, sand, stolen, stolen, stolen. I think she's waking. She's waking up. How did I get here? Where am I? You were tracked. How? You have friends. And they have friends. That doesn't make any sense. Your radio has a tracking device. Didn't your friends tell you? Who are you? Where am I? I remember crossing this bridge, riding the bike through town. Before the van broke down, it was some kind of storm. This is the Haven. Rest now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. You scared me. Who are you? Where am I? How did I get here? And where is everyone else? What's important is that you're here and you're safe. I'm Dr. Curtis Hartwell. Are you a Plutarch? <laughs> no, darling. There are no Plutarchs in the high desert. Is this a collective refuge? Uh, let's just say we share common interest. And they didn't tell me your name. Only that you are a carrier, as indeed you are. If this isn't a collective refuge, what is this place? I'm just here to make sure we all eat. What is your name, dear? Nora. Harlem. And your last name? Where is Hartwell? I am a descendant. That is all. Which means you're not a member of the Collective. <laughs> my partner's assessment of my situation is that I'm an ally. Is this a farm? What are those domes? It's not exactly a farm. More of a stroke of a lifetime of genius. You are most likely in need of a meal. I'll make you and my partner breakfast. Follow me. This is my wife, Marianne. Lovely. Oh, so young and beautiful. Do sit down, dear. How old are you? 26. I don't think we've seen anyone under the age of 40 since, well, before the CE. Have we, darling? And she's a Harlem. Oh, my dear child. I didn't think anyone got out alive. The reports are slim about what happened to the eastern seaboard. Last I saw Michigan is the new eastern seaboard. Oh. What? The satellite images we received must have been doctored. It's much worse than we thought, Marianne. Hmm. So, how did you travel over a thousand miles away with an unborn? Where are you headed? I was with the Scout and other Collective members on our way to a refuge. All I know is that it's here in New Mexico. I'm sorry, darling, that you couldn't make it to your intended destination. The fact that you survived the sandstorm is... Well, it's a miracle. Look at you. How far along are you? If you don't mind me asking. Six months or so. And did you really travel... All the way from Harlem? I had no choice. How did you make it all this way? My mother helped. Did you get separated? No, she died when I was 16. Do you all have a portal because I'd like to let her know I'm okay? I'm sorry, young lady. We don't have that kind of signal up here. You go ahead and finish your breakfast. Afterwards, if you're up to it, I'll show you how those of us that are left eat.
welcome to aquaponics. What is this? This is the key to earthbound survivors. You see those lovely, healthy fish swimming in the tubs under the tables? The nutrients from the fish travel up the tubes into this bed of reddish rocks. The rocks serve as the bedding for the plants that are now growing tall in this sustainable environment. Perfection itself. So you're growing food in a lab? No, this isn't a lab. This is the new supermarket, if you will. An alternative and safe way to grow food, especially when you live in the desert. These red rocks that look like rabbit food, they serve as a conduit for the nutrients that travel up the tubes that feed the plants. And the nutrients from the plants travel downward into the water to keep the fish alive. Symbiosis at its best. There's at least a hundred pods out here. How do you maintain all this, and what do you do with all this food? We feed many. You mean the collective? Many. If you're not a member, why do you do this? Hmm. Consider me an opportunist. My wife is your ally. Me? I'd love nothing more than to see procreation come back in style, as I'd make more money that way. But, since we don't have any offspring of our own, meaning who would I leave all of this greatness to, and well, your little renegade group won my partner's heart. I take it the Plutarchs don't know you're out here. Doesn't matter who knows. Everyone needs to eat. No one bites the hand of a farmer during times of scarcity. When we die, this little operation automatically shuts down. Then what? There are others. Remember, when the people resist, there are always others. Oh, hello darling. Glad you can join us. I'm thinking our guest might want to lie down. You must be tired, Nora. Yeah, I'm actually not feeling too well. I feel dizzy. Taos is 6,966 feet above sea level. You need to drink more water. It will help to ground you and acclimate you to the high altitude. If I can just stay one more night and then you could direct me to the nearest settlement? You are more than welcome to stay here. More than welcome. <clears throat> However, I must say, we are not equipped to deliver an unborn. We can see if we can find transport to someone who can assist you. And we promise, you wouldn't have to go anywhere else. If that's okay with you. Yeah, I'll go. I honestly don't know what to do. I'm sorry to be a burden. Oh, don't be sorry, dear. You've been through the worst. Right now, it's important for you to rest. I have a friend who can take care of you and your unborn when the time comes. In the meantime, if you'd like to hear what's going on with the rest of your people, there's a broadcast you can listen to in your room. Make yourself at home. You have time. Not much. Hello, Young. I haven't heard back from you, so I imagine I might need a VRF to contact you. I'm with a couple, the Hartwells, for now. I am safe. There's actually a collective live feed radio broadcast. If I hear any news about the collective, I'll let you know. We're coming to you live, broadcasting from Jaw, connecting to our collective sisters and brothers planet wide. Music is alive in the new world, and we're bringing it to you from the UK farm. Guys, whew. It is a sweltering 30 degrees here in the West End, and it's only 10 a.m. <sighs> Hope you filled your water tanks this week because it's dry out Thursday and we do not want to hit a day zero like our fam in New York. Rest the one million souls. So, let's take our minds off water and take you to eco-punk rocker and Lakota native Patrick Chicago. In case you've been underground and not plugged into Joel, Patrick Chicago was one of the lucky ones who survived the CE and still making music for him. Let's see how. Patrick, do we have him on the jaw line? Are you there, Patrick? It's Bristol from Jaw. Yes. Hey, Bristol. Patrick! Hey, thanks for joining us. So glad you made it out of Chicago alive, man. And you're making music. Tell us how you're doing. Thanks for having me on, Bristol. Yeah, we got hit hard, and I'm just thankful to have made it out alive. Luck was on your side, man. <laughs> Not luck, Bristol. 
Denial is not one of my character traits, like the sleeping masses that kept their million dollar homes in the coastlines. Nah, I built the studio away from the antics of the cities and the coastlines, programming music on analog. Analog? Raw, that's mad, you know. Proper old school. You actually have it over there. Okay. Anyway, tell me about the music. Your band before the CE topped the international charts. You were hot in all of London, man. You must miss those days. Nah, we actually sucked, Bristol. Patrick, are you mad? Come on, man, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that I made shit music. I got a ton of STDs and then the world ended. Rock and roll dream, Bristol. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> you know, that's what we love about you, Patrick. All out, open book. So, the new world brought you to some enlightenment, I'm hearing. Look, uh, I'm 60 years old and my elders told me long ago that the world was going to shit. So, I welcomed the earth changes that you all call climate change. All it took was one big planetary storm to kill that soul drain called the internet, which means all of that crap music I made died with it. Now it's all about a cosmic reset. And we can't wait to hear some of that new world music. But before we do, do you have time for us to take one lucky caller? Sure, Bristol. Okay, looks like we have a collective member all the way from the high desert of New Mexico. Hello, New Mexico. You're on the jawline. Hi, DJ Bristol. I listen to your show almost every day. Thank you for your support. What's your name, caller? Uh, my name's Jude. Na 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 na. Hey, Jude. From New Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a question for Patrick? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, do you have any advice for me? I want to make music like you, Patrick. I want my life to be about music, and I don't know how with the world ending. <laughs> you sound young, Jude. How old are you? Fourteen. Wow. You were born the year of the CE. Yeah, my sister and I both want to be musicians. We're twins. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Look, all I can say, kid, is for you and your sister to make instruments out of what's around you. Look, people need music. Even at the end of the world. And we can't wait to hear some of that new world music of yours, Patrick, that will carry us in this new age. <sighs> my music isn't about the new age. It's... It's about an ode to the end of the world, my friend. Come on, Patrick, come on. Let's give our young musicians some hope. <laughs> All right, good luck with that, Bristol. Remember, kid, there's only the collective now that have helped human beings tap into the true soul of nonviolent protest. And the Plutarchs, well, they can suck my long, and sweaty... And with that, we'll take our thirsty listeners on a ride with Patrick's new tune mixed with some analog rhythms. Thank you. Patrick, for giving our artists out here living beyond the CE a reason to live and a reason to create in the new world. Bless the departed souls, and as we breathe each moment towards joining an everlasting collective, we at Jaw leave you with these words. The world ends with us, fam. The world ends with us, my friend. Staring at the stars again, my love? Isn't it a lovely night, Marianne? Want to go for a galactic cruise? Remember, you get seasick, let alone taking a shuttle to the other side of the galaxy. <laughs> Imagine, you and I, dancing in our first-class space pod suite, the Milky Way as our glorious backdrop. We could still try for the moon. Transports leave once a month. The moon? Please. Mars is the dream, darling, isn't it? <laughs> what? We were in our 20s when the first mission launched. Yes, and if we could have afforded it, our honeymoon would have been spent eating space crackers and pooping in spacesuits for six months. <laughs> if only the world was ready for aquaponics before the CE. People had no vision, let alone the good sense enough to realize that most of the Earth's soil would be completely void of nutrients for growing anything tried to warn the Plutarchs who owned the university, but no, they wanted to keep me as their young black prodigy, the budding genius scientist they could use for window dressing for their funders. 
Though, obviously, I was a genius. Their loss. No regrets, love. <sighs> Look at the beauty of what we've built for Earth. Hmm. What's left of it? I know we didn't have the chance to leave the planet. But our legacy, what we've built together, aquaculture on the moon, those colonies wouldn't have lasted five minutes without your work. I suppose so. And don't forget Mars. Yes, dear. We'll have our first transmission with the first colony only a month from now. Isn't it exciting? I suppose. Oh, if the fragility of age wasn't still the thorn in scientific advancement. Maybe I should have worked on preventing aging instead of growing food from fish poop. Well, according to our new guest, mortality isn't an obstacle to human existence. Oh, that poor, poor child. Brainwashed to believe such nonsense. To actually believe she can talk to her dead mother. We are not here to judge a person's spiritual beliefs. I know how they accomplished it. This communication with the dead via VRF. The downloading of one's chi or spirit into a heavenly neural digital network. Nonsense. Don't knock it until you try it, dear. Oh, please don't tell me you believe such a farce. If you say you do, you'll give me heart failure right here and now. <sighs> Would you try it? If something happened to me? Please. I don't wish to have a conversation based upon a concocted scenario that breaks my heart as we speak. Our guest seems to have made quite an impression on you. But what are we to do with her? She can't have a child here. No. No, she can't. I am also concerned about who else knows. As much as I want to protect her, we cannot jeopardize our facility. Yes. The Collective could not survive without our pods. I was thinking about our other interest, like our investors. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be able to feed your charity of choice. Darling, let's not argue. Every choice we make is our choice. <sighs> yes, Marianne, I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't like to feel vulnerable, especially after everything we've worked for. We need to send her to a place where she can deliver the child. I've actually been thinking about that, and I have an idea of someone who can protect her and provide support for her birth. And who are you thinking? I think it's time to contact the beekeeper. Frank, how's monsoon season treating your flock? The flock is out right now, waiting for the winds to settle. What's going on, my brother? Good to see you. <laughs> you as well, Frank. Life in a lower altitude is the same as always, which means business is good. Well, I'm not doing too bad myself. I'd be doing better, though, if you were calling to report how my little ones were doing now that they've literally flown the nest. I won't hear any reports on the new Mars colony until our first transmission. They arrive next month, right? Yes, and if you'd like, I could bring you in on that transmission. No! No thanks, my man. One thing you're good at that I'm not is being the ever-so-smooth scientist businessman. <laughs> I'm quite okay with collecting a check incognito. I like being rich and remembered. And how is the woman that manages to keep you ever-so-humble? <laughs> Having a soulmate does have its advantages. You should find one, mi amigo. The lone wolf persona you adopted in middle school is far from sexy. <laughs> I have thousands to keep me company. Though it broke my heart to part with my queens, who are now space-bound. What if I told you that you could see your queens once more without an extra pair of eyes? I'm listening. What's the catch? Oh, no catch. Our lifelong friendship is not transactional, Frank. You know I've always had your back. Same here, my friend. But I know you, and you never call me during monsoon season, because you know I'm out with my flock. So out with it. <laughs> Touche. I have a special guest I'd like for you to meet. Someone who needs safety and protection out of sight. It's a serious situation and I only trust you. This guest needs more help than we can give and you have lifelines here in the desert that we don't have. Lifelines? Family. Sounds serious. Whatever I can do, my brother. As long as you can get your guest here. 
We'll send for transport to your place tomorrow. Come on over. Don't be afraid. They don't bite. What are these? <laughs> Where are you from? Wait, what's your name? Nora Harlem. Wow. You are far away from home. Yeah. I guess you're too young to have seen any of these. Supposedly extinct, which means this is our little secret. These are regular old-fashioned honeybees. Perfectly harmless. The Hartwells told me you were a farmer. Did they now? I see myself more as a caretaker. Follow me. Welcome to my lab. Have a seat. I'll stand, thank you. I really think you should sit. You are carrying a lot there. What is this place? All this? This is how I monitor my flocks. Honeybees are on this screen here. Those big guys there. Those are my rusty patches. Hey, you like pumpkins? I have to grow those just to feed my gourds. And these here? I'll show you. A close-up. That doesn't look safe. No. These are what keeps us safe. People used to call these African killer bees. Folks are just racist. These are my sweethearts. Their honey is just as sweet. I keep them in a special place. Oh. Hey, you okay? I'm fine, just a little tired. You, look, thank you for the bee tutorial. I'm just really confused as to why I'm here. But Hartwell's told me that I would be with someone who could help me. I can. I mean, like, I'm a carrier. Uh, I know. I thought I'd be with a doctor or something, not a bee farmer. Beekeeper. Right, whatever. How can you help me? What? Because I'm in a wheelchair? You underestimate me. Look, you're right. I don't know a thing about escorting new life into this world, but you're on the run. Believe it or not, you, my friend, are in one of the safest places on the planet. <gasps> hey, hey, you okay? Uh, have a seat. Uh, is this happening now? Can you get me some water, please? Sure, uh, hold on. Here, here, here you go. Thank you. I'm okay. This happens off and on. I'm good. Are you sure? I can get back up if it's time. For real. I'm good. Look, you're the first carrier I've seen in a long time. Long before the CE. The fact that you survived the CE and made it all the way here? I can't even begin to imagine how you're feeling right now and what you've been through. I know this is weird, being shuffled around to a total stranger, but I promise you, the Hartwells, they're like family. And if they want me to protect you, that's what I'm gonna do. And I do know someone that can take care of you when the time comes. What's that? Hold on. It looks like a communication is coming through from an unknown source. Shit! What does that mean? It means that a communication shouldn't be coming through because no one other than the Hartwells knows I'm here. Is everything okay? I don't know. Uh, it might be a fluke. The first time it went off in a long time was the day of the sandstorms a couple of weeks ago. Probably need to replace the wiring. Anyways, are you alright? Yeah. There's a room all the way down the hallway to your left. You have your own bathroom. First class amenities. Hmm. Thank you. No problem. By the way, do you have a port? Nope. If you need to contact someone, let me know. I have to send transmissions out through here in the lab. Everything is encrypted so they can't be tracked. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Mom. I'm recording this message instead of transmitting. I'll upload it when I can get to a port. Right now, I'm with a man who calls himself the Beekeeper. Frank, I'm still somewhere in the desert. He made a noodle dish with chicken, something I haven't had in over a year. I didn't see any live chickens around when I arrived, and 
I didn't ask where it came from. The meal also came with a slice of pumpkin pie. My taste buds are off now, so I don't know if I liked it or not. I think my taste buds are off because of... I have something to tell you, and I don't know how. I betrayed the collective, that is... That's all I can say for now, in case this message gets compromised. Oh shit! Sorry mom, I, I have to go. I have a radio message from my friend, Young. That must have been the communication that set off Frank's alarm. It also means that my friend's alive, somehow. I promise I'm determined to make my way to the refuge. Home. Nora, this is Young. Are you there? I hope you made it. I sent someone for you to rescue you after the storm. A local collective ally. My radio transmitter got lost in the storm, so if you sent any messages, I didn't get them. I should have never let you go alone. I don't even know what the collective rules are for a carrier. Maybe the collective will have you. We can't just abandon you. There... There's only one person that I can ask about this. I'll keep trying on this frequency until I... hear from you. Son Auckland. Hello, my son. Hello, father. Good. Good. I'm so glad you checked in. Are you? I'm not sure. Why are you not sure? What's wrong, son? Remember when you told me that I'd see things that weren't right or wrong? Yes. Well, I saw something. Something that goes against everything the Collective stands for. And I don't know what to do. I don't think it's right, but I don't feel it's wrong either. And you don't know what to do? Oh, can you change the situation? No. I mean, I can't change it, but... Maybe I can help it. Well, my son, sometimes situations are just information. You're a witness, and you learn, and you move on. And? And what? I know there's more. I know you, Dad. Don't hold out. <laughs> yes, you know me too well. I'm still protecting you even though I can't be there. I wish your mom and I could have gotten out. I know, Dad. It's okay. We're here now. Tell me, what else, Dad? Oh, yes, the situation. Well, sometimes a situation is information, and sometimes a situation points you in a direction. I don't understand. Son. Yes, Dad? Whatever you decide, take care of yourself. I wish I could be there. You are, Dad. Thank you. I miss you. I miss you too, son. This will all be over, and we'll be together soon. Remember, the world ends with us. You've been listening to The Collective, an original radio play written by Asada Radcliffe. Directed by Asada Radcliffe and Fred Greenhalge. Produced by Fred Greenhalge of Dagaz Media. You heard Tyler Williams as Nora Harlem, Chantal King as Carrie Jude and Radio Voice, Nathan DeFort as Jeffrey, Marco Solo as Jason, Laura Daler as Carrie Ann, Eddie Maisonette as Scott, Chelsea Mohawk as Nina, Eric Yang as Young Auckland. Quinton Nash as Empathy Builder Guard, Cortina Jackson as Sarah Harlem and Nora Harlem, Elena Rose as The Director, Brian Wilson as Dr. Hartwell, Jocelyn Townsie as Marianne Hartwell, Amina Karima as DJ Bristol, Luis Bermudez as Patrick, Cosme Duarte as Frank the Beekeeper, and Edwin Tiong as Sun Auckland. 
This production was recorded remotely by the performers during the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. Production assistant, Remy Dickinson. Sound editing by Remy Dickinson and Jason DeWald. Sound design by Jason DeWald with additional mixing by Fred Greenholge. Original score by Stephen Duros. In World Music by Marco Solo. Produced in part thanks to a grant from the Main Arts Commission. Learn more at dagazmedia.com slash the collective. That's D-A-G-A-Z media.com slash the collective. Oh wow! Uh, what do you? How, how are you feeling? It's funny. I I said um, so. There's like a little backstage chat. Like I've heard this show. I mean, dozens of times, but mm-hmm. this is my first time sort of experiencing it as as a listener. Um, and, and sort of like oh, as a new piece. And I don't know. I I I love it. I'm so proud of of what what we've created here, Asada. How how how? What was your experience like? Yeah, listening to it now, and I know you know we're going to bring on the actors momentarily. Um, as I was listening to it, I kind of felt bad at first because, I, you know, we were writing this before the pandemic and I thought, oh, God, this is so such a downer right now. You know, that was kind of my first reaction. But um, a couple of things I was thinking that I wanted to say, um, you know, a lot of this this theme, you know, of, of try, humans trying to figure out ways to find peace um, and freedom. Um, That really came out of a lot of my frustration just around seeing our country go backwards, Um, especially um, with a lot of the, um, just where we are in terms of of race. Um, And then also too, um, looking at um, climate change and the impact of, just people having to relocate from lands that they lived on forever. Like I was just watching a documentary a couple days ago about the Kiribati Islands. And you have these islands of people who, you know, they they have to abandon ship, so to speak. And, and um, you know, they have to leave their home that they've been on for thousands of years. I think about what happened in Syria. And a lot of people don't know the history of Syria and how you know, thousands of farmers dealt with drought and that was the cause for, you know, people moving into cities and cities becoming overcrowded and then you have civil war. Um, And it just seems like as human beings, we keep coming back to conflict and greed and, you know, just the abandonment of of any egalitarian way of living on the planet. And and it just, you know, it's global. Mm -hmm. And so this concept of, you know, me thinking about a way of nonviolent protest with the collective that that came out of, you know, what I've been trying to reconcile with, you know, humanity and where are we moving forward? This was before the pandemic. So a lot of people are saying how they feel like the world has changed since the pandemic. And I would say that the world really hasn't changed. It's just that the pandemic, I think, has pulled the veil off of a lot of things that were already there or maybe things we didn't want to look at it. And now things are like exacerbated a thousand times. Um, so that's kind of where I think the impetus for the story was, was was kind of simmering within me. I needed to get it out because I'm reconciling these personal things. And then also too, um, and you know, when you approached me, you know, to do this project, one of the things that was important for both of us is that, you know, we wanted to do something with a diverse cast you know, and so listening to it now, when you ask me the question, like, how do I feel listening to it? You know, just like I'm picturing all of the actors and we have such a, a, a diverse cast, um, really pulling in Native American actors, you know, into this project. Um, a lot of this was like really important to me. And also, too, people don't know that you um, used to record on location. And yeah. that was that was yeah, one that of the things we... <laughs> that drew me to wanting to do the project with you because it took me back to, you know, filmmaking and going on location. And so just this idea of us not like the whole dream was shattered, it seemed, you know, and we had to go back in or just going into the studio. And then how do we do this at a distance? 
Um, so a lot of things kind of changed. And, and I'm just wondering, like, how you feel now about the shift in what you what was kind of your signature as a, a radio show producer? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, um, uh, uh, DJ Bristol and, uh, you know, that scene, um, I keep that, the, like the, 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 like he's get you know, make art with what's around you. <laughs> it's kind of, that's right. kind of the vibe. Um, that, yeah, that's the mood of, of 2020 into 2021 into hell of mm -hmm. a you know, this may be, well, we won't go down there, but like that, the, like, you know, thinking about like I take a long view. Of, I mean, I when I think about radio drama, it connects all the way back to oral history, and you know, there's there's you know, some, I don't know something I read recently about how the mo there's like a hundred thousand year old story as far as we know about the you know the Pleiades and the the, the constellations that mm -hmm. go back to where there's a star that has burned out that was part of the oral tradition connects us back to that star. So like this idea that you know, stories are something that connects us, you know, generationally and across time and spaces is something that I, I think is really powerful and kind of like, you know, when I think about stories, it is sort of our, our, our one unique, uh, you know, thing as, as, as a species, like we're definitely not the smartest species that exists on this planet, but mm. we do have this ability to communicate and to pass information across generations and time with stories and radio drama taps into that. So whether it's, um, you know, talking around a campfire, whether it's um, adding music, simple musical instruments or drum beats or uh, that to it, or, uh, you know, in the golden age of radio drama, as people think of it in America, was a lot of techniques that were adapted to the technology of the time, to the way mm -hmm. certain ribbon microphones sounded and the way that like AM, FM, uh, AM radio broadcasts sounded in that era, to adapting to modern day podcasting, to okay, we can't do it the way we thought, but now we have to do it this way. I think this the storytelling just, you know, the however, we're going to make stories as, as a species. It's, it's one of the things that does keep us sane in a world that is often un insane seeming. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I think there have been, there are lots of very particular technological challenges of making things sound as like sort of immersive and realistic as I would like um, with that sort of challenge, but I'm really proud of how th how this came out. And, you know, I think, you know, for a lot, I mean, I'm just grateful we, we got to do it. And I, and I think there was so much love that went into the project. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when we, I think it was, it was like literally the first day of spring of this year when we started actually recording and you could just sort of feel the vibe among all the performers it was like, we're just, so glad to be doing something creative like we have been through this uh collective traumatizing experience and many of us you know if you're in other forms of performing arts not doing your thing and mm -hmm. though this felt a lot different than how we thought it was going to go down uh we did get to you know make something together and that's really really cool experience that many people don't get to have that right exactly uh i'm curious so you know um you're talking about your inspiration and the sort of real world rooted issues of where the story came from. Um, but you also make a choice to explore it through futurism. And I know that's another part of sort of why we cross paths is you had a, you, you were teaching a course on futurism at the time. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, we, we love a lot of the same types of uh, media. Mm -hmm. um, so there just generally, you know, cause you could imagine that there might be a uh, whatever, a, version of the story that takes place in our contemporary times without any futuristic elements, but sort of what, as an artist, what aspects of, of futurism, however you choose to explore that, like, wh why do you keep coming back to that? Yeah, well, I mean, as a kid, I was, when I was a little kid, you know, I was drawn to sci-fi. Um, and so it just kind of goes way back. And just personally, like, my mind was always like, never in the present moment, which is kind of <laughs> off because I practice like Dharma and Buddhism and stuff, which grounds me in the present moment. But yeah, it's just kind of a personal thing. I've always been this kind of attracted to stories that are visionary. Um, and I'm not writing this because there's a, a big push right now um, for, for writers and for filmmakers to, if, if we're doing futurist work, 
to maybe be problem solvers, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm not trying to take that on. Um, for me, it's just um, about because when I when you think of yourself when you're a kid and you're thinking 2020 and the 21st century and like, wow, am I going to be alive in the 21st century? So, you know, as a kid, I'm envisioning all this stuff and I never would imagine like we would be still talking about like the KKK and like what, you know. So for me, I think futurism is just a way to see the world the way that it isn't right now. And I know that's a very basic answer. Um, and I like to um, actually add the realism of adding people of color to the story because actually the world is populated mostly with people of color, even though we don't see that reflected, you know, in, in the storytelling that you're talking about. Um, so just that's really important to me because I didn't see that growing up, like watching like Star Wars and mm -hmm. other than Lando Calrissian, like one character or, you know, Star Trek a little bit, you know, diversity. But um, so, yeah, um, for me, futurism is just about, you know, writing it keeps me in the world in the way that I want it to be, but then also being realistic. And so how do we have these characters who are on the ground characters. I'm, I'm a very character driven writer. Um, and so how do we make it through this tough stuff? Mm -hmm. And it's not like a, a movie like Dune or um, I don't know. I, I and I love those kinds of movies. Um, the day after tomorrow, you know, um, I, I, you know, I mean, those, I mean, someone listening to me now thinking, wow, you like the day after tomorrow, <laughs> but just, but just like, those are the epic things. And, mm -hmm. and, and I want to write the more on the ground stories and, you know, just watch how we continue to tell these stories and pass on these stories. The characters are doing that in this. And this is just a sliver of, mm -hmm. of this, of the collective story. This is just, you know, we were just kind of playing around with, you know, characters and it really helped me to inform, you know, the, the book one that I'm writing, mm -hmm. cause it's going to be more than one book, but um, anyways, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you can feel the 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 depth of, of the world building, but also in a way where you're not kind of like, ooh, look at all my cool toys. Like it is very rooted in the in the humanity of it. And I, I remember at some point during our development process on this, you were saying it's kind of like the gig economy is, is in this world. Like these are we're meeting, you know, yeah, people are finding ways to survive in this world. It's really about the it's really about that. It's really it's not about like the Plutarchs versus the collective and like the spaceship. It's really about people mm -hmm. who are just figuring out how to survive this world and which makes it really, yeah, I think connectable, you know, at, 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 you know, we're, yeah, you're wrestling with some really meaty topics about what is the future of the species if we don't change our course in a very dramatic way, very, very fast. And then but, too, but like you talked about the gig economy. You know, and so you have like um, the Hartwells, you mm -hmm. know, who are, you know, have this aquaponics. Uh, you have um, the beekeeper, you know, Frank, and he's this mysterious character who's actually a big character in the story. It's just he has a small part in the collective. But you have in the future, I see the survival of individuals in small pockets and they found mm -hmm. a way to kind of do their own thing. And they're not connected to any other like bigger type of institution. And so I, I'm thinking people are going to have to, that's where we are like right mm -hmm. now, the gig economy. And, and hopefully people will, will begin to be creative and turn more towards futurist thinking and, and survival ways, you know, that connects to uh, community. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Uh, I think I'm going to bring up some of our, intrepid cast members who are joining us um we want to kind of hear their perspective and i think we can have a really interesting conversation about some of the themes and starts of the story so i'm gonna bring them up uh quentin i'll say you're something about your micro cameras complaining so i can't bring you up just now but when you get that fixed i'll bring you up and hello hi chelsea hi everybody, hi, everybody. hey hi. guys awesome um well, first off, you all are fabulous. Round of applause. Um, yeah, hey, we're out. Hey, the, internet, the, internet, the internet is clapping. Oh, here's Quentin. <laughs> and, every, and everyone is in different parts of the country, yeah. and we had actors in different parts of the world. So this is great. 
Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's do a round. <laughs> so I don't think we said this at the beginning, but um, I'm Fred. I'm in Alfred, Maine. Asada, where are you reporting in from? I'm reporting from Portland, Maine. <laughs> Portland, Maine. Chantal, hello. You were in Maine. I, where, where I was in Maine when recording this, but now I'm in uh, Los Angeles at the moment. Los Angeles. And uh, Chantal, you play the Plutarch radio I voice. Yeah, I play radio voice Carrie and Jude. Hey, Jude. Uh, Chelsea. <laughs> hey, Chelsea. Introduce yourself and your character. Hi. Yes, um, Yacht A. My name is Chelsea Mohawk. I also play Nina. Um, I am... Well, I was actually doing this from Vineyard, Utah. So out here in Happy Valley. <laughs> awesome. Tyler, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm Tyler. I played Nora. I'm from I'm in Philly right now. <laughs> awesome. And Nate. Hi, I am Nate Dufort. I play Jeffrey and I am in the suburbs of Detroit. Awesome. I love the LEDs in your background, by the way. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, that's cool. Chippy. And, and Quentin. Yeah, I'm, I'm Quentin Nash. I'm from Norcross, Georgia, and I play the uh, Empathy Builder Guard. Awesome. Well, you all are fabulous. I was saying, you know, that this experiencing a new by playing it back this evening and just hearing all of you bring your characters to life in such interesting ways was a real pleasure. Um, so I guess. Uh, uh, we'll just sort of do a round again. I'm curious, basically, what you like most about this project or your character. Um, yeah, just some, something about uh, how you either felt connected with this project and then maybe something about um, your character. Maybe starting with you, Chantal. Yeah, sure. Uh, what really connected to me for this project was just how we brought heavy topics to light, but also had an underlying theme of hope with all these people trying to help Nora out no matter what the situation was. Like, yes, there were these huger themes, but at the core of it, it was just people trying to help each other at the end of the day in, 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 a, in, a, in a way of like just hope. So I, I really resonated with, with that. Um, and I actually really liked Jude's character <laughs> mm -hmm, <laughs> of just mm -hmm. trying to this like young uh, perspective of everything that's happening and kind of this whole idea of like, I'm young, it's not going to affect me, I want to keep going with my dream, <laughs> but kind of having this reality of the of the um, uh, of saying that like, hey, but like, keep aware. Of well, around and, and Jude is born post CE. Yeah. So that's, that's the other part that I yeah. think is interesting, right? Is, mm -hmm. is like, you think, you know, so many post apocalyptic stories, it's like, you're the people surviving the thing. But now mm -hmm. it's like, wait, what's it gonna be like for Jude? Yeah, like you're <laughs> in like, it. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know what it was like before all this. Yeah. And, yeah. and just so people will know, um, if they didn't catch it. So the CE basically is there was a big catastrophic event that's unknown. We don't talk about what it is. And so the time, the calendar starts all over again after the CE. And so this is a kid who's born after that, who just wants to do music. So that's what you're, and thank you, Chantal, that yeah. you said that there's hope. Cause yeah. I just, if my perspective <laughs> is the writer, I'm like, oh gosh, this is so bad. We're doing this during a pandemic. <laughs> that's but funny. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea, uh, yeah, something about this story or character that connected with you. Um, well, first of all, Nina is a bat. So that's one of the things that <laughs> was in her description. Um, and the fact that she's she's Navajo from Albuquerque. And you know, that's what I am. I'm um Tubaha, Tubaha uh, I'm Edgewater, which is from the Navajo Nation. That's my main um term. And so um the fact of being Navajo and native um was exciting and that you know that you guys reach out. Um, you know, even though Oh, Nina doesn't believe in what the collective believes in. You know, she just, she just, um, she, she's happy to be there to protect them, you know, because their family, it's her home. And, you know, that's one thing with you guys, you know, you guys are now considered family and it was such an experience. It was my first time doing um, voiceover work and I'm just super appreciative that, you know, like you said, this, we were bored and we wanted something to do. And this was something definitely new because, you know, like I said, it's my first time doing voiceover work. So super appreciative for that. And then just fun, thank you for the opportunity. And the best part about it was doing remotely. And y'all don't even know if I'm in pants or not. So I can just look fresh from, you know, camera up. So 
<laughs> it, it was super fun. It was a fun experience and I love the way it all came together. Awesome. Well, you're absolutely fabulous. Thank you for lending your talents. <laughs> um, Tyler, you our, our star <laughs> or, or the center of the story. At least. <laughs> I like the story because I like stories about really stubborn hope and bad times. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know, everything's gone to. Can I curse? Is that okay? You, there was plenty in the show. So okay. <laughs> like, everything's gone to shit. Nothing great's happening. You fucked up royally, and you have to find a way to get out. And people are willing to help you, or, you know, some people are trying to screw you over. But at the end of the day, it seems like there's actually, you know, a chance to make it through. And I think those are really nice stories. <laughs> Awesome. Hey. Uh, yeah, I mean that's I guess that's the moment we're we're currently in. Uh me. Uh there are so many things that attracted me to the project. Uh first of all, uh just being uh an observer and a fan of Fred's from afar, knowing that he did everything on location and then seeing like, oh, we're gonna do this remotely. Mm -hmm. How the hell are we gonna pull this <laughs> off? But then I know, just right? reading, yeah, but then reading the script, like I love, you know, coming from a place where we did a lot of social satire in, in my previous jobs. I love when you have a layer between you and the truth that you're selling, right? Mm. So it being futurism or as having a science fiction bend, uh, this is a message or messages for literally anyone and everyone mm -hmm. who may not even realize, oh, this is a direct commentary on our times. Mm -hmm. It's something, as we used to say in theater, like, oh, they'll get it when they're walking to the car. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, that's mm -hmm. that thing that I think science fiction and futurism can do for us is we can talk about really heavy things mm -hmm. that may be an argument at uh, the Thanksgiving dinner table. But here we can all come and meet over something that has a little bit of distance so hopefully we can convert some people or maybe change some minds about the events that uh, that we're all living through yeah and, and develop a sense of empathy because you can connect with the human experience of a of a person trying to survive a situation and that's that yeah love it yeah. uh quentin hey uh yes no i was uh, attracted to this project because um, i've always been a pretty big sci-fi nerd you know i'm um I grew up watching Star mm -hmm. Wars, loved me some Star Wars. I had like the, the whole collection, all that stuff. It was it was awesome. So I, I knew that uh that I, I had to jump on a sci-fi project, you know. And uh it it all uh, it sounded so great. And um uh, I, I picked up on um another message of of unity, and I'm a big like unity person. I love how people can make the best of a bad situation and any time and uh, help each other out. Um, I know they're, they're really sticking their necks out for Nina. They could have been in a, a lot of trouble for helping mm -hmm. out a carrier, but they, but they did it anyways. Mm -hmm. And um, also another thing is, funnily enough, is I'm a guard in real life. Oh, so my, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so this is right in the character. <laughs> right, right in the character. But I, no, but I, I love the guard too, because like, uh, like I think, you know, you can, like how, is he supposed to let her go or not? And, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I kind of like, he's one of the, like, unambiguously, just, he's just a nice, he's just a nice guy. He's, just, <laughs> it's like, he's like, he's got a job, he's got his thing, but he also is not going to be like, oh, yeah, I knew you got to stay here with these weirdos. Yeah. And also, too, Quentin, your character actually has a bigger role um, in the story. Because he talks about, and just very briefly, he mentions mm -hmm. to her, because she asks him about water. Mm -hmm. And he starts telling her about these water pirates. Water pirates yes. um, and so Quentin, you know, he's actually connected to these water pirates who are trying to bring um, water to these people that are living kind of off the grid in this dystopian Albuquerque city. Um, and you have these corporations who have, you know, pretty much fenced off all of the natural water sources. So you have the people who figured out how to go and get this water and bring it to um, to the to the people, so to speak. So he has a connection to that. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, we would have had a two hour show if we would have really gotten into <laughs> yeah. a lot, a lot of the issues yeah. of all even, you know, even Nate's character, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Jeffrey, um, he has a thing he actually has a relationship with someone who's in the collective but he doesn't want to join the collective so that's kind of how he got roped into um being a scout 
and 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 he's kind of this person who is protecting the collective. So Jeffrey has the story. Um, Nina has the story. So all of these characters have bigger stories. Um, but we just had to figure out how to squeeze it all in. And you all as actors, I just love working with all of you. I hope I get to work with you again because you're just brilliant and just really Yay. just just bringing it to life through this time that we went through. There are a lot of people who went through this pandemic that aren't around. You know, people, some people mm -hmm. didn't make yeah. it and, and here we are. Yeah. You know, and we just, no matter how hard it was and challenging it was to get together and get you all the tech support, because some of you needed the tech stuff. Like, how do we do this if we're not in person in the studio? Um, so I think this project here and the fact that we have actors who are not here who couldn't make it because we have different time zones in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Like just the fact that all of us came together mm -hmm. and we're all dealing with our own personal, probably some serious grief and hardships you know, through this time we're going through. And I just, you know, just artists, like we just, this is what we do, you know? Um, and so just thank you all for, for being a part of it. Fred and I had no idea. I thought we were just gonna have a few people audition and we had over a hundred people auditioning and we were just like, oh my God. So it's just, you know, we, people yes. were not just bored. I mean, I was, you know, it wasn't just boredom but it was also too, just this kind of starving to uh, make meaning mm -hmm. out of all of this. How do you make meaning when when it's yes. just it seems mm -hmm. seems so dark right now? The times mm -hmm. seem that way. So us coming together tonight and it just makes me feel really good about me even writing it. Because sometimes when you're sitting alone and you're writing, you're like, what is this? Nobody, this doesn't matter, but it does. Because look, mm -hmm. we're all here, you know. So thank you. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, thank you for all Yay. that, Asada. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, seriously, um, <laughs> we really appreciate it. I. I'm so well. I have a set of questions I think it'll roll into basically inspiring people who may be watching this and be like, "Well, how do I make something like this?" Because I also I'm also you know a huge advocate of like you make your own story like that. Is, this is a this is a form of art that um, you know there are not no barriers to entry, but it is something you can do, and um, the technology is not inaccessible in terms of like cost and complexity. <laughs> Um, so I'd be happy to talk about on a little bit on the production end, but starting from like the actor end, um, I'd be curious, I'll just do a round, like, uh, for someone who is getting into this. Um, so regardless of whether or not you're, you're, you yourself are, are fairly new to the medium or have done a bunch more of it, like what, what do you, you know, what, how, <laughs> what would you say to other actor performers out there starting with you, Chantal? Oh man, to get into voiceover and just kind of the, the, the recording sure. setup of, yeah. <laughs> Of all that, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, isn't it technical or artistic or, you know, in yeah. spirit, whatever whatever moves you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, think it, <laughs> I think life's too short not to do what you truly love and what you truly want to do. And I guess that was my, my biggest drive, is living your life to the fullest. And if you have a desire to create or just a desire to make things, what's the worst thing that could happen? You know, you make it. That's cool. <laughs> in, in, in my opinion. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, and just, you know, every, every step is actually just every, every failure is actually a step to success and don't be afraid of the failure because that just makes you a better artist and a better person in general. Uh, so don't be afraid of that. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you have to, uh, fail in order to succeed. You like, do. Like, like, you like, do. <laughs> uh, the, yeah. You Anyways, there are many, many and, and, shows. And we don't have to look at it as failing. Right. You know, <laughs> there's that saying, what's yeah. yours won't go by you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I think, I think of it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. You're only, you're only leveling up in video game mm -hmm. terms. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting XP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chelsea, something to share about just the artistic spirit. Yeah, um, so she she said a lot um, about it. Um, basically, just nothing is ever reach. You know, you just got to get out there and, and try it. Just like, you know, when I found out you guys doing this, I have never done it in my life. Um, you know, I, I MC like powwows, local powwows, different kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and announce our performances. So I do kind of, in a sense, have, you know, some practice. Uh, but in terms of this, this, like you said, I've 
I've never done before. And, you know, look where I am now. This is my first um, voiceover audio play. And, you know, I, I've been trying to learn uh, some of them I don't get, but I don't, I don't give up. And that's just what you need to do. You know, when, as I say, one door closes, another one opens, it's another opportunity. There's endless opportunities out there. Um, even if it's not in voiceover, you know, there's, I also worked with uh, Yellowstone as the Native American Affairs Assistant Coordinator. So, I mean, anything you want to do, you can always do it. It's never out of reach, like I said. So just, just keep going, keep trucking, never give up. Even if you fall, you know, um, stuff off, keep going. So you got this. <laughs> we all got this. We all, we all did good. And, you know, it's, it's, you're never a failure. Like, like I said, it's not failing. So. Excellent. <laughs> Tyler, something to vibe. <laughs> oh, I kind of fell into voice acting. I'm primarily a writer. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up oh, here nice. because I made my own podcast and I couldn't afford to ask people to voice it. So I did the voices. And oh, I mean, cool. it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Um, and as everybody says, if you don't do anything, it's never going to get done. So if you don't try mm -hmm. and you're too afraid to start, you don't have a shot of actually getting what you want. Mm -hmm. It's better to try and fail and then get something out of it than not try at all and get absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I think many, many podcast creators, th that is that is the origin story is uh, I wanted to make a thing and it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So I needed to make a thing. And now I'm in the thing. <laughs> uh, uh, Great yeah. advice, Fred. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, that, that I get. I get asked by lots of writers. They're like, sort of like, hey, how do I get started in this? And it's like, I think this is a. It is a medium where, if you are a writer and you sort of don't, uh, uh, you know, consider yourself a multi hyphenate, right? And you're like, well, who's gonna make my thing? It's like that's really hard to kind of like get get lift off. But if you say, okay, well. I'm going to either learn stuff myself or look mm -hmm. around for people and see who I like and respect and kind of seems to be on the same wavelength as me and maybe approach them about collaborating. You, you just kind of have to, you have to activate. Um, it, mm -hmm. it is a medium where it, it does takes that initiative to, to kind of move the, the thing. Um, Nate, what do you have to say on mm -hmm. to, to, well, you know, actors or other creatives? About Come on, Nate. Things. I know you got some for us. <laughs> well, I, you know, I agree with so much uh, of what's been said already. There are just so many talented people here um, making magic happen. Uh, the only thing that I'd add is there are help. Uh, there's help and there are mentors everywhere and not to be scared to ask uh, because you know even as i look amongst this group i can't see that there's a person here if asked if they had the time or you know resources would would offer that advice to anyone that asked them so you know be it already in your existing creative community or you know finding online resources and communities where you can find mentorship in your specific medium it's out there and it's hard to take that first step uh, but as we've said before without that first step you can't get any balls uh rolling here mm -hmm. so don't be scared to ask for help there are many many nice people and mm -hmm. creators that want to uh lift other people up so don't be scared to ask awesome quentin what do you have to say um i think uh Really, a lot of people struggle with uh, confidence. You know, confidence mm -hmm. issues is that um, yeah, that they have things that, that are available to them, but they're too afraid to take that first step. You know, um, so the first thing you need to do is you need to uh, like, like. There's a lot of people who they don't like hearing their own voice or mm -hmm. they don't like seeing themselves on film. But the more you do that, the more you'll get used to it. The more you'll, you'll be able to relax and get the job done. You know. Yeah, well, and and let's also be honest that there's also there are haters out there, you know. Oh, I think oh, the yeah. fear, Lots. you know, like like I I will say I like I like I don't look at reviews on podcasts because like yeah. um, oh no, it's just a dark place. Um, and it and it is a it is something that I think is a challenge is is to like when you yeah you're putting something that comes from the heart out there on the internet and uh you know we have a very loving circle here but there's also a lot of not a lot of awesome people out there and 
and that yeah that, there's there's sort of nothing to antidote for that other than to find your people and and uh you know because there, there's also a lot of that happening exactly where, you know one mm -hmm. nasty comment comes up but then like a posse comes like a, let's go bury that stupid thing um but yeah i i, I think you you just you yes. have to sort of find a way to to know in your heart that the thing you did was good and has merit and uh and if someone says a nasty comment it's because they wish they could be you and are jealous that they're not as awesome as you are because they don't they haven't made anything <laughs> <laughs> and, and two i wanted to add too and this kind of piggybacks on what quentin was saying you know about kind of having self-doubt you know there are people that will take a chance on you even if you've never done it and i was thinking about chelsea you know and we were making decisions yep. about, you. you know <laughs> about about her role about the role you know and i really wanted to go with chelsea and you know, we wanted to go with chelsea you know and i thought well she hasn't done it before but there's just something if you want it and you have that quality it as long as you give it like that's what matters and so you know it's important to know people are going to take that chance they will and if you don't get a project or whatever or if a pandemic happens and you know like inevitably i just believe that the right opportunity and project will come. And then I think too, um, meeting the people that you meet when you're working on these projects, at least for me, you know, I've, you know, have long-term like working collaborations like in the future. And like I said, I really would love to you know, work with all of you again in some way um, or another. And then also too, um, with, with this type of storytelling and filmmaking, you know, I wanted to acknowledge the musicians too. Mm, um, yeah. Steven Doros, who wrote pretty much most of the soundtrack, and then Marco Suolo, who did um, some music, um, especially the DJ Bristol scene, really great um, kind of hip hop futurist music. Um, and people, a musician may not think, oh, you know, I can actually make music for a radio drama or podcast. Like, so there's, this is a um, project that I love because you can put together so many artists and then you have your tech people behind the scenes. I always like to acknowledge those people too. Um, and mm -hmm. as I said, so these are things that you can think about, not just for actors, but other, you know, part pieces of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So for the people who want the, like, what are all the literal steps to make the thing? So we have a script. It all comes from the script. Cause if you don't have a story worth telling, you sort of don't have anything. Um, and you know, and, and I mean, I have a free online course about writing for audio and there's lots of resources out there. Uh, so anyways, get yourself a story. Um, we did a casting call, um, which I think I just ran it on my website. There's like a simple like web form. You could do it with Google forms. Um, you know, it's just a way, especially if you don't know anybody. Um, and there's also like, you know, Facebook groups and other places where you can put out casting calls specifically for people who are into audio drama too. So like they kind of know what the what the what the thing's all about um so that's kind of where we found people to work with and then you have to get them all to show up and well there's sort of there's multiple ways to do it there's some some uh you know, creators who will have actors sort of record on their own time and send in the lines which is fine i you know there's so much energy and joy and just you know camaraderie that happens when you can be together that i i really push for that whenever humanly possible um we did it we did a rehearsal didn't we asada it's now it's getting yeah. foggy but yeah we did so we <laughs> yeah. we did like a zoom session where we read i think we, we probably didn't read the whole thing we probably read um samples or just certain scenes and kind of got a feel for it mm -hmm. so i think you know we rehearsed over zoom and then we had the day of recording um i you know, we use a service called clean feed which allowed uh, me to get everybody's lines um, like separated. So like, otherwise, like, you know, if two people are talking at the same time, but you didn't actually want that one piece, you couldn't undo it. So um, clean feed worked on that. There's a few other pieces of software that will do that. Now you have, you know, uh, I mean, we did it all mostly in one day. Um, I think we mm -hmm. had a little bit more with you, Tyler, to, to we, we did another day. So we, we met it. So this is an hour long piece. Most of, uh, it was a long day. <laughs> it was a marathon. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we did it. Um, and then, and then sort of goes this, then you sort of go into editing world. And at that point um, we had a, uh, our sort of intern production assistant, Remy, who also was new to this. Like he had uh, mm -hmm. just graduated USM and um, the theater professor there said, Hey, uh, Remy's great and kind of interested in some production stuff and joined this project. And I'm like, 
Remy, here's a whole bunch of audio. <laughs> Go have fun. Um, and he did great, you know, and, um, it, it, you know, it's, you know, you don't necessarily have to be fully into podcasts. I think Remy had done stage and lighting design for theater as well as a little bit of like video. And so it's not that hard if you do a little bit of video work to pick up how to do stuff in an audio environment. So then that happens. Um, I had a friend who also helped me with sound design and finally did the sound design myself um, to kind of get it to the last leg. And then as Asada said, we had two musicians, which is a beautiful luxury. Um, but I, again, it's like you can go and find you know free sound effects online you can go and find uh music that you can use for free online but like you know and that, and that can be the 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 choice that makes sense when you're at a certain point in your art but i have always just wanted my work to not sound like anything else anyone's ever heard before and so that's where having a musician can really well you know will, will help um and also with sound effects um you know we didn't get to go to new mexico like we'd hoped but we did there are a lot of sounds that were new for this show that were created for it as well as sounds that existed that were like manipulated in weird ways so so anyways that's it's 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 a fair number of steps but on the but compared to like making a movie it's a lot easier <laughs> um and, and then like, too hmm. employing employing actors you know yeah. That was something that was meaningful. I never thought about it for, like that. Like we were able to, you know, just create little jobs, you know, during the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and if you're at a level where, you know, you're, you're trying to make something and you, you're like, you know, you don't really have the resources to, you know, get a professional musician or professional this, like there's like, uh, like when I early on, like the first person who did music for me was just like, I don't know, like, I think probably someone we somehow randomly crossed paths on the internet but had done was just really wanted to do music it was like it, we were at similar sort of life paths where like i really wanted to make a thing he was into music but didn't had never done a feature length thing and so it was like well maybe there's a way we can both benefit from this is because i your music will make my thing sound good and you'll have a chance to work on a thing and it and you know there's yeah like i i am definitely 100 percent an advocate of paying people and yeah ethics uh in production but there's also a, quite a lot of bartering and favor swapping yep. when a lot you're, of sweat equity yeah when you're when you're kind of like at that bootstrap you know the show make a show you know mm -hmm. by sweat and gristle kind of level and um yeah it's it's a uh, it yeah the the, the, the we you know whether we can change the macro world who knows but we can at least change like our world <laughs> and maybe mm -hmm. the, the people who experience our arts worlds so. mm -hmm. yeah uh well we we have a couple minutes i'd love to hear because we were again when we were chatting before the show started like a lot of people everyone here is up to cool stuff so let's let's give a moment where everyone can shout out uh what they're up to or or um starting with you asada <laughs> All right. Anything yeah, else? So you I'm I'm writing finally uh, writing the novel for the collective, um, and I actually decided to because this particular radio drama takes place far into the future, so I actually decided to go back. So I'm actually writing in the late 2020s. Um, the book will be different eras, so this is going to be the first era of the collective, and I'm really having a lot of fun writing that now. So that's what I'm working on. Awesome. Chantal. Nice. Uh, yeah, I recently moved to LA. <laughs> I, uh, I just signed Yay. with an agency uh, and we've been auditioning like crazy. So that's what's been, that's what's awesome. been hip hop happening. Well, yeah. <laughs> when, when you get booked for awesome epic things, let us know. And we'll, share. we'll do. We'll do. Awesome. Chelsea, how about yourself? Um, I not really doing anything cool right now. Oh. <laughs> I just, um, just auditioning uh, when I can, when I get the chance. Um, as I mentioned, you know, some of them don't fall through or some of them, you know, just, just don't work out, but I'm not giving up. So still, still going to try. But you, uh, you, you also do art though, right? Cause I feel like I follow you on Instagram. Yeah. You have really cool art. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And then, so that's, that's what else I was going to mention. Um, we just do a lot of our bead work. Um, can I give us a shout out? <laughs> so our, our page is, uh, Mohawk Dallies on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of bead work. Uh, that's all we're working on right now. And then um, just working at the flower shop. I'm a floral, a floral designer. Um, super love it. I, I just love being artistic in general. So anything artsy, 
I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Awesome. Um, your audio was breaking up a little bit. Could you drop oh. your the your Instagram link in the chat so people can follow it? Oh yeah, yeah, I can do that. Uh, if I can find it, yeah, I can definitely do that. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us, Tyler. Um. So recently, I've been trying to sell a book that I wrote. Wrote the sequel to that book. Finishing up the third season of my podcast, and I'm studying through a patent agent test. Woo. Woo. All right. Uh, what's the what's your podcast? Oh, it's Inco I N C O, IncoPodcast.com. Okay. It's not child friendly. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> duly noted. We're doing, and we're gonna be checking all that out. I yeah, I can't wait to your podcast. Excellent. All right. How about Nate? Um, as an actor, I've got a couple upcoming podcasts. Um, the transposition of Chloe Bronte, uh, written by William J. Meyer, that drops on Monday. Got an upcoming podcast from Atypical Artists and iHeart. We've got three or four video games coming out in the next Ooh, three or four months nice. that I voice characters for. Fair. And then really quickly, some child-friendly podcasts. <laughs> uh, we have uh, uh, Unspookable that looks at the, um, the brain science and history as well as the power dynamics behind urban legends for middle graders. And reach a space podcast for kids, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, interviewing astronauts, uh, engineers, uh, and really kind of proving that space is for everyone, wow. not just the millionaires that are in the news going to space right now. And then our weekly um, uh, comedy podcast, My Neighbors Are Dead. Uh, talks to the tertiary characters from horror films that never existed uh, through the eyes of comedians and improvisers. So actually, uh, the next couple wow. of weeks, we have uh, guests from some of our friends that are writers for Colbert or for John Oliver, uh, one of our, our good friends that writes for um, a work in progress on Showtime come by. They play characters from off screen in the horror films, and uh, you see the events of those films through their eyes. It's very, very fun. That sounds very funny. Nice. I just can't imagine, you know, you see somebody running through the wall, you know, running along the sidewalk. You're like, oh, I wonder where they're going. And they, yeah. they never call the cops. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got to hear it for That's 30 minutes a week. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is where I was going. We, we had to go pick up a pizza. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really, the pizza did not want to get cold because last yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Quentin, how about you? Oh, uh, I'm on my own uh, voice project right now, adding uh, adding uh, all sorts of audio and sounds and, and my voice to my mm -hmm. favorite book series, Warriors. It's one about the uh, cats. The cats? I know. <gasps> yes, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that series. So uh, I, I, I just, I thought one day, hmm, I wonder if this is on audio. And I couldn't find anything. So I was like, you know what? I have to do this. I have to do this. So I've nice. I've gone to like shelters hey. and stuff that uh like uh animal noises and stuff like that. It's it's awesome. it's gonna be a big thing hopefully. Oh, and cool. I'm also getting ready for um well actually we're we're on hiatus right now, but um I'm filming with uh, Dean Von Odd. It's uh, called Night of the Pumpkin People, a uh, feature film. It's uh it seems like it's gonna be pretty creepy, but uh, but also fun. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. Awesome! Uh, what a fun group of people um yeah and i i do have so this show i'm very excited about will be on um the feed for uh my post apocalyptic podcast the cleanse so if you want to share what you experienced tonight with friends just tell them to check out that podcast and yeah i'm now doing podcasts as my main full-time affair which is exciting though there's one that's coming out now as a horror comedy called black friday with fred armison in it in this like uh, you know, basically zombies attack in a Walmart store, but it's also <laughs> it's about the friendship and the coworkers who are trying to fight off the horse of the dead, That's as well awesome. as a satire of you know uh, late stage capitalism, mm -hmm. um, oh, and, and, a, and a send up to horror, you know, to zombie movies. So that's been a lot of fun. I have all these very strange squeaking uh, toys <laughs> behind me, and there's like a, a turkey <laughs> uh, carving knife that comes into it later. So um, yeah, lots of lots of fun fun things happening. I love uh, just what sound offers for a palette. Like I, I, uh, I really feel like this medium is a form of magic where you kind of, you know, it requires audience participation. So you have to, as the sound artist, set things up and do the stage craft, but then the person has to be there to 
to fill in the blanks. And when, and when it, as a listener, when that happens, it can really be very satisfying because you are, you know, it's, it, you're participating in it. It's not like, you know, uh, I, I love movies and TV too, but uh, it's not a bunch of CGI and visual effects artists mm-hmm. showing you things. It is every, like, like what kind of clothes does Nora wear? Right. And, and, you know, does Jeffrey wear boots or sneakers? Like, uh, these are all things that every <laughs> listener will, will have and, and whatever happened to poor Scott. Like, these are all things that, um, you know, each listener gets to bring their own experience to the, it, you know, gets to develop their own thing. So I don't, I just, um, I just really think that, uh, yeah, the world has a lot of challenges, but there's a bit of a renaissance happening with audio storytelling that I'm really excited to be a part of and mm-hmm. grateful that all of you are part of this project coming to life. Um, excellent. Hey. I guess we're getting close, close to time. Um, I want to do another shout out again for Maine's art, main arts commission, because they did support this project, um, helped get equipment in the hands of people and, um, <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, it, it may help made it make it happen. Um, and uh, yeah, my, my closing words are just a bunch of gratitude for all of you. Anything else to add, Asada? Um, no, just again, everyone knows how I feel um, in this group of people and, the, and the, the rest of the actors and people who couldn't be here today. Just really grateful and thankful. Um, just energizing, re-energizing this project. Um, and also to... Um, I will be sending a link to all of you, probably, um, we're looking January, February, to produce the actual soundtrack, because there's a lot of tracks that were made. So I will um, send you all a link to that. Uh, We're working on that right now. So just another shout out to the musicians as well. Um, But yeah, Yeah. just love, I'm just happy to see your faces again Mm -hmm. um, from, you know, back in the springtime. Excellent. Well, yeah, and and any and if you're interested in that soundtrack, wherever you're watching the stream now will be a place where that will be when the, when it comes to be. So, um, all right. Well, thanks again, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and watching, listening, uh, all of the above. And um, yeah, be good out there. <laughs> be kind to other people and tell good stories. Yep. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everybody.